Good morning. We welcome you to worship at Messiah Lutheran Church. As our introduction to the day, apparently not satisfied by Jesus' feeding of thousands, some who were there press him for a sign of his power. Perhaps it's daily manna that they want. As always in John's Gospel, when people want a sign, Jesus offers himself. He is the bread come from heaven to give life to the world. He calls us to come to him and believe in him, and through that relationship to know the one who sent him. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is my strength and my song. The Lord has become my salvation. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them and praise the Lord. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are gathered for worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great mercy, wash away our iniquity and cleanse us from our sin. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Do not remove us from your presence. Do not take your spirit away. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain us with your spirit. Amen. God is merciful and gracious, granting forgiveness through Jesus Christ, who was given to die for us. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world and all its need with the life that comes only from you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we hear God's word, our first lesson is from the 16th chapter of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? 
for they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Here ends the reading. Our psalm for this day is the 23rd through 29th verses of Psalm 78. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven, raining down manna upon them to eat and giving them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided them food enough. The Lord caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and powerfully let out the south wind, raining down flesh upon them like dust and flying birds like the sand of the seeds seeds, letting them fall in the midst of the camp and round about the dwellings. So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter, Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it's written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord our God, fill us with the food that lasts, your word, your body and blood, that we may be strengthened to go into the world as your light. Help us to open our hands and open our hearts to share who we are and what we have with others. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. It seems to me that today's gospel text reminds us that the crowds back then in New Testament times were not all that much different than crowds seem to be now. With everybody wanting more, still hungry, still thirsty. Because don't we hunger to be seen, to be known, to matter, to have meaning and power? And people today, still we thirst for recognition and affirmation. And we're thirsty for our 15 minutes of fame. Well, in today's text, we meet Jesus just after he's fed the multitude in the sixth chapter of John. The gospel writer has told us in the verses that appear just before today's passage that that everyone has had their fill of bread. They've had the pleasure of eating enough. We know that people have pushed away from the table that Jesus set for them in the wilderness feeling satisfied because according to the story, there's even leftovers. So John in his gospel tells us they ate until they were satisfied. That is, they had had enough. At the end of last week's story about the feeding of the 5,000, we were left to our conclusion. What a miracle. 
What a sign, what a feeding. Jesus certainly held the people's attention at that point. They were ready to rally. They were ready to acclaim him king. But Jesus wouldn't have any part of it. So according to John, Jesus and his disciples slip away, crossing the Sea of Galilee by boat. And then the multitudes follow in close pursuit. It must have made for quite a scene. 5,000 people clamoring down the mountainside and loading into any sort of seaworthy vessel to be found. What a picture it would have made. Hundreds of boats filling that sea. And ultimately, John says, the crowd wins. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Surprise. But perhaps the biggest surprise is yet to come. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, says Jesus. Now, I suppose I can sympathize a bit. You see, the crowd was hungry for more. Sure, they had had their fill of bread and fish. They had had enough. But isn't there a funny thing about enough? Because there's always the question, just what is enough? You might remember those Snickers candy bar ads that begin, you're not you when you're hungry portrayed by celebrity athletes or actors. The point is when eating a Snickers candy bar provided by a concerned friend, the character is transformed back into themselves and indicate indeed that they are better. Well, unlike being satisfied by eating a candy bar, the people of Israel in Jesus' day were not satisfied with the mountaintop meal that they had just been served. The people were irritable and they complained, what's next? What are we going to eat? How are we going to make it? We're not ourselves when we're hungry, you see. Now, what fascinates me about this story is that the answer is right there in front of them. It would have hit them between the eyes. I am the bread of life, Jesus says. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And well, that seems to get their attention, because actually it sounds pretty good, a little suspicious maybe, but tempting. Okay, the crowd says, we'll go with you on this one. But what kind of work do we have to do to get this food? Just believe. Jesus says, just believe that I am the one God sent. Well, at this point, the crowd box, wondering who in the world this guy thinks he is. After all, let's be clear about what Jesus is offering. I mean, he's holding out the shining apple, the golden ticket, the first prize. He's offering the bread of life. You know, the food of myth and legend, the nectar of the gods, the stuff which grants life eternal. And so the crowd is skeptical. And who wouldn't be? It's as if you've re resigned yourself to the fact that you've had a terminal illness. The doctor tells you that the latest tests suggest it might be something else altogether, something more treatable. I mean, you want to believe it, the surprise for the better. You want to believe it more than anything in the world. But my word, what if they're wrong? These well-intentioned people who have surprised you with good news, what if they're just plain wrong? Which, in a nutshell, is what is so hard about the gospel and the sacraments that we celebrate because most scholars say that's what John is really talking about here, the water and word of eternal life, the bread and the cup of salvation, the sacraments, these wonder-filled means of grace which come into our lives, disrupting the neat order that we've arranged. They surprise us and even shock us by making these audacious promises of life and wholeness, and that's hard. 
for on a day-to-day -day basis, most of us have gotten pretty good at defending ourselves from the pain and frustration and hurt and despair of life that this world offers up. And then these promises of God are announced to us. And they only betray the foolishness of our self-reliance and at the same time, they promise us more than what we could ever hope for. I mean, just think about it. At baptism, we pour water over an infant's head and announce to her God's promise to be with her forever. To travel with her, to go with her wherever she may go, to hold on to her through all that life has to offer, including even death and then to grant her life eternal. Well, my goodness, that's some promise. And then exactly the same thing happens in the Lord's Supper, or each time you come to the table, you're promised nothing less than forgiveness, acceptance, wholeness, in a word, both life now and forever. And the thing about all of this, about forgiveness and acceptance and the like, is that such things as we know just can't be gained or earned, coerced or accomplished. Like love, they can only be given as a gift by one person to another. The thing is, just as with Jesus' words to the crowd, such a promise made to us is just as frightening as it is comforting, for such a promise raises hopes and expectations to dizzying heights. And so John reports that the people naturally ask, what miracle will you perform so that we may see it and believe you? In other words, well, go ahead and prove yourself Jesus. And doesn't that sound awfully familiar for how much easier faith would be if God would just do what God's supposed to do and give us such a miracle. But God, you see, our God rarely does what God is supposed to do. For our God is a God of surprises, of upheavals, of reversals, and so rather do what God is supposed to do God does the unexpected. Instead of pronouncing judgment in the face of our sin and selfishness, God offers mercy. Instead of justice, love. Instead of condemnation, forgiveness. Instead of coming in power, God comes in weakness. And instead of giving us a miracle, God gives us God's own self. And people of God, isn't that the heart of faith? The faith that we are privileged to live and to cling to. That the eternal word who was with God and is God from the beginning and participated in the creation of the heavens and the earth is the same Lord who cares so desperately for us that he gave his life for ours on the cross and gives himself still in the bread and wine. Perhaps in the end, that's the hardest thing of all for us to accept about the, the sacraments, that they contain God's unexpected, surprising, unfor unforeseen gift of God's own self. For as we've already said, against much of the pain and disappointment and grief of this life, we can defend ourselves, but against this gift, against this surprising and disarming love of God, well, we're totally helpless. Well, this is the gospel. The good news for us today, God's surprising, audacious, somewhat startling, and ultimately life-giving promise. And not only do we hear God's unexpected word of forgiveness and mercy, but we're also invited to take it and eat it and live it. So people of God, let us come and receive the surprise of our lives. For those who come to Christ will never be hungry 
and those who believe in him will never thirst. Amen. Together with all of God's people, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all of creation. Gracious God, you call your Church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of ministry. Where the church is divided, knit us together and restore the unity of the faith. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You command the clouds above and cause the winds to blow in the heavens. Watch over deserts and wilderness places. Regenerate rainforests, defend species at risk of extinction, and strengthen the work of conservation organizations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry. Reassure those who are despairing. And accompany those who are sick. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You provide food that endures for eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered with all the saints and feast together at your heavenly banquet. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my, my blood, shed for you and for, for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever, amen. All are welcome at God's table of grace. The sacrament being offered here at Messiah Lutheran Church each Sunday within our in-person service of worship at 11 o'clock a.m. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with spiritual food, the body and blood of Christ. All who come to you will not hunger, all who believe in you will not thirst. Empowered by the sacrament, send us back into the world to do the work you have given us to do to share the gospel and be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Once again, as a congregation of Messiah Lutheran, we thank you for worshiping with us and we extend our invitation for you to join with us again next Sunday, either online beginning at 11 o'clock a.m. or by joining us for public worship at 11 o'clock a.m. at an hour in our sanctuary at 1106 Yemen's Hall Road. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. May you go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.